participation as an agenda item to begin the meeting. I have copies of our public participation policy here and they're being passed around to the table so that you can take a look at the policy. While the policy limits participation to matters on the agenda, given the circumstances, we are willing to extend that rule for this evening. For those who wish to make a statement during the public participation portion of the meeting, we will ask that you do so only after you have been recognized by the chair and that your comments are respectful and do not include negative statements about specific employees or students or elected officials. Our policy expressly forbids discussion of personnel issues. These requirements are important for the protection of our staff our students, and the school department. And although I will enforce them if necessary, I ask that you follow the policy so that I do not need to interrupt anyone. We do have a complaint process whereby parents can make a complaint about personnel issues and that will be processed, though not through the public participation process. We have a full agenda tonight. So I'm going to ask that public participation be limited to 30 minutes total, if that amount of time is needed, and it seems like it may be. Please be respectful in terms of the length of your comments, so where we usually can go up to three minutes for um, individuals to speak, we would like you to try to uh, reduce that so that we can get as many people um, given a chance as we can. If I feel that the comments are repetitive of a personal nature or not civil, I will, I will ask that the speaker stop. Please remember that the public participation portion of our agenda is for the board to hear from the public. And though, although we do not intend to speak ourselves during this portion of the agenda, we will be listening intently to all you have to say. Finally, before we begin, I would like to clear up what appears to be some confusion over the board's role in Principal Creech's resignation. Pursuant to Maine law, if the superintendent were to recommend the non-renewal of a principal, the board would meet to determine whether the non-renew, whether to non-renew that principal. If the board votes to non-renew a principal, a principal with more than two years' experience within the department may request a hearing before the board. The board would then conduct a hearing and make a final decision. In this instance, none of the above has occurred. There has been no recommendation to non-renew Mr. Creech, no vote to non-renew, and no hearing. Mr. Creech resigned. His resignation was irrevocable, and he immediately announced his resignation to the school community with no action at all by the board. So at this time, if you do have a comment you would like to make, what I would suggest is you do move over this way towards the podium, line up behind each other. You do need to state your name and your address. We're not going to ask you to sign your name this evening, so that will shorten it for you. And all you need to do is be able to say your name and your address so we know that you live in the town. And then what we'll do is we'll set up a time. Chef, 
Very good. Did the chair change the comment time to two minutes? Yes, I said two minutes to allow as many people to speak as possible. And many of us prepared for three minutes. I'd ask uh, the chair allow us to speak for those three minutes more than that. If you have an have a actual written speech for three minutes, seeing that there are not all that many people lined up at this time, I think you can probably have three minutes. I should be 256. <laughs> I appreciate the Chair's opening remarks on the openness to these public comments. Good evening. I'm David Cleary. I live at 33 Meeting House Road. In my re remarks to this panel two weeks ago, tonight, on the issue of school start times, I posed several questions. Two weeks later, I have not heard a response to those that I asked, and just want to clarify that two weeks ago, tonight, those were not rhetorical questions. And I believe that this community is owed a response. Specifically, I asked you if you felt that you really believed it was in the best interests of five-year-olds to be at bus stops before 7 a.m. So do you. I asked, do you really believe families should be burdened with higher aftercare costs? So do you. I asked, do you really believe that more kids spending two hours a day on a bus is acceptable? So do you. And I asked you if you really believe that the solution to athletic scheduling is to simply dismiss students early, thereby cutting into instructional time. So do you. I know that each of you have my email address because I've been fairly vocal, so I would appreciate a response at your first opportunity. When the board voted on April 2017 and approved the new start times, it was agreed to delay implementation by a year, so more time could be spent to study the issues and develop plans to address implementation challenges. That time has been well spent. The delay has done what it was intended to do. What you are seeing by the response in this community is not some out of the woodwork knee-jerk reaction and opposition. It is the product of people across many stakeholder groups learning more and more and seeing that the issues are indeed not adequately addressed. We are still asking you to reopen the discussion to seek a more reasonable compromise. I also said two weeks ago that you had a fractured community on your hands. And tonight, as fractured as it may be in some regards, I see tremendous unity. In the last two weeks, that fracture that has grown has been largely in relation to developments with a particular leader, which we cannot name by name, and the overwhelming community support, and the decision to reject that particular resignation rescission. This community is stunned. Teacher letters opposing start times, teacher letters recommending a hybrid approach to proficiency-based learning, Fear of retribution, lack of transparency and communication by this board and superintendent, and clear favoritism of a subset of this board is beyond disturbing. Yeah, Mr. Clary, we, we can't. There is a petition being circulated Clary. now to call for the recall of this superintendent and a no confidence vote. It's that broken. Mr. Clary, there's also discussion among a growing number of how to call specific members of this board for the entire board. Hi everyone, 
Can you hear me? Okay. My name is Krista Nilsson. I live on 23 Morning Street and I am currently working at the high school. Um, I moved here in, well, I was born here, but I moved back here in January of 2015 to pursue my master's degree in mental health counseling. Um, I, I literally moved back into my childhood home with my two parents, uh, one of whom several of you know quite well, I think. Um, I, I had some family and friends here from when I was in high school, but the community feeling had not yet been present until I started working for the school district in August of that year and became part of the fabric of this community almost instantaneously. I was welcomed with open arms, open hearts, and open minds. It was my first time working in a school, so I didn't really anticipate exactly what this place would mean to me and what these people would mean to me. I want the best for my community, my colleagues, and my kids, who you see here. I'm currently on the eve of my last day working full-time as a school employee, although I will remain involved as a sub. I'm working with a freshman class, and it would be hard for me to not go to all of the sporting events that I go to. Um, a, a really great man once said, you don't have to be in a leadership position to lead. And I think we're seeing that in action here in this community, of which I am so proud to belong. Look at this community, please. Look at this community. Look at all of these people. Take this all in. Hear us. Feel what we are saying. What community means to me is in this room. It's in this town. It's, it's really showing up for each other, having each other's back, standing up for people who you feel are the best embodiment of what community means. Every day, I put everything that I have, my heart and soul, into doing what is best for these kids. I always have that at the forefront of my mind. I want everybody on the board, in leadership positions, superintendent, assistant superintendent, I want everybody to be able to look these kids in the eye and say, I truly have your best interest at heart. Because right now, I feel that they are being robbed. Thank you. Seize your opportunity. Thank you. 
I'm the junior class president of Scarborough High School, and I live at 15 Wilshire Road. I am here tonight on behalf of my classmates and the entire school of Scarborough High School because we strongly believe that our principal belongs with us. He has been amazing in hearing of all of our issues, our desires, our happiness, our sadness. He's there for us when we need him, and he brings this energy to Scarborough High School that allows us to, and also teachers, it's not just the students, we feel that we can be heard and we can say what we think and we're not going to be shut down or said, oh, you're just a teenager, you don't really know what you're talking about. And he tries to create a rapport with each of the students. And I think that's something that's really special because not all principals are involved and invigorated by their students. I am, I'm here tonight because he is, he's just, there are, there are kind of no words for how he is. And we stand behind him because he stands behind us. And we are supportive of him because he encourages us and he supports us. And I know that with whatever I do, because I have had to plan dances and do other sort of events, and he tries to make time for me, and he tries to say, okay, like I'm super busy, but I can fit you in here because I really, I want to help you, and I want to support you, and I want to make sure that you have all your chaperones, and all the police are covered, and everything is ready to go. And it's just, it saddens me that we've come to this point, and the students have been so incredible with coming up to the protests, making signs, being enthusiastic, making sure that they are, their voices are being heard. And I, I've been to one of the implementation committee meetings for the New Start time, and he was there supporting me and encouraging me and saying, you did a great job, you're, you're doing a great job, I really want you to be involved with this, and I really want you to help out. And he makes, he makes me and he makes everyone else feel that we matter, and we do matter, and we're not gonna go anywhere. We're here, and you need to recognize us. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, I'm Cameron Jury of 10 Ironclad Road, and I'm here at Scarborough High School. I'm going to keep this short, you know, people who wish to speak, but as Elizabeth, I'm simply here to talk about my support for our principal. I feel truly honored and blessed to have gotten lucky enough to have had him as my principal in my time in high school. He is a positive every he is a positive energy every single day that means the world to students who are struggling to get through the day. He has time. Oh, is that better? Okay. Um, he 
has time and time again fought for the students, and now it is our time to fight for him. No matter what, he has been involved, he has been caring, and he has been one of the most kind administrators that I have gotten the chance to work with. Today, I am asking you to hear our voices, to listen to the students, and to begin to recognize that we will only continue to stand by our principal. Thank you.
at the high school and other schools in Chicago. I have seen a lot of students, teachers, principals, school boards, administrators, and families in Scarborough. And one thing I realized is that there's not a single person here tonight, including those on the school board and as administrators, who doesn't feel that the most important thing tonight in this conversation is the students. And we have to pay attention to that. Every person in this debate wants what is best for the students. The staff and students of Scarborough High School really do have to be considered in this discussion. Scarborough High School, six years ago, was a broken, discouraged, lost, and confused staff and group of students. We've been through some difficulty with leadership. Since then, we have been healed and have a new spirit. We have been listened to and respected, whether we're teachers, students, or parents. This was critical with the work we had to do. We built a new eight-period schedule without being told how to do it or what to do. That's conflict, but we worked our way through it and were supported. We developed an advisory program. Again, we were not told what to do or how to do it. We were led. We worked hard as teaching staff for two years to develop the NEAS report that was given glowing comments when the NEAS team spoke to us. We are working on incorporating a new system for evaluation. We've made our first steps to transition to proficiency-based learning. And with that, our leadership has reminded us every day and in every way that we must be student-centered. That's why we're there. That's what matters the most. I think we need leadership like that. I would hope that everybody would step back and take a deep breath here, hopefully calm down a little bit, but also open your minds, open your work style, open your thoughts to being able to work this out in a positive way. Thank you. I think Sylvia should get this a little bit too serotonin in this I first would like to ask um, the chairwoman to uh, amend her initial comments where she indicated that the um, principal's resignation was irrevocable. It's my opinion that it's irrevocable, irrevocable because you choose it to be. And this is a community that's asking for leadership that considers the voices of its constituents, those people who have elected you to, do, but to fulfill an obligation and a duty. I've heard, I've heard um, mentioned that you represent the interests of the students and not the people that have elected you. I'd like to remind you that the uh, people that, the students first of all can't vote, the parents are the voting body, your representation of students is not defined, and that's very concerning to me because that means that you're able to make up that definition as you go. And I have a feeling that that's what's happening. And I don't think that many of you are doing that intentionally, but I think that that's the position that you're in, and I think that you're receiving some misguidance. And I'd like to feel heard, and I'd like to feel feel like my neighbors are being heard, and I'd like to feel that the students are being heard. It was really discouraging when we met and had a protest, and within hours, there was a media statement issued saying we don't accept the, the um, precision of the principal's resignation. That was planned in advance. That was um, an intentional act, and it, it's really um, confusing to me how that happened without a board meeting, and who exactly is making these decisions. Is it one board member? Is it two board members? Is it by the phone? It's not in public. It's not transparent. And you can say that these things are personnel issues, but the process is not a personnel issue, and I have a problem with the process.
Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Griffin and I'm a senior in Scarborough High School and I live at 37 Finger Road. I have worked closely with Mr. Creech as a student council member, morning announcer, and member of the NEASC student panel he created to help our school get accredited last fall. I've had the pleasure of having Mr. Creech as my principal for the past four years and I admire both his leadership abilities and enthusiasm for his job. Mr. Creech is one of the only adults who has ever asked my opinion before and after making changes that affect my life. It is one thing to make improvements to a school, <laughs> but it is another to actually take the time to ask the students if they would benefit from it. This year, he created a group of around 30 student leaders who meet once a month to discuss our opinions on how SHS is running and how we can improve students' lives. He takes the time out of his day to help improve our days. And I'm grateful to have had another adult in my life who cares about my educational experience. I think what I respect the most about Mr. Creech is the extra effort he puts into the students' well-being. A few months ago, Mr. Creech pulled me aside in the lunchroom as he had spotted a student sitting alone with his head down. He asked me if I could keep an eye on that student and make sure that he's okay. That is who he is. Looking out for the students even when they haven't asked him to. I'm lucky to have grown as a person under his leadership. And I'd be lucky if someday I became as respected and kind-hearted as he is. It would be unfortunate if the generations behind me didn't get the opportunity to work with Mr. Creech. They're truly missing out. As a student who knows SHS inside and out, he's the perfect fit for Scarborough High School. Decision making process. 
I know that is not with regard to HR issues, but it certainly should pertain to policy changes such as start times and the PBE grading system. We were told that a document would be published with answers to many of the outstanding questions on the start time change, and that has not happened. I am again asking you for transparency and to please listen to those with first-hand knowledge in working with, and with working, sorry. <laughs> Please listen to those with first-hand knowledge and work with your administrators. Remember that these are the same people tasked with implementing these changes. Please take accountability and end this crisis in our community. I am reading the letter that she wrote for me to write, and I just, I have not read it yet. Um, when I was a kid, I moved over 500 miles away to a foreign town called Scarborough, Maine. I was going into fourth grade and was just placed to do a living classroom, so right off the bat I had a disadvantage. I knew no one had an idea where things were. I was thrown miles away from my friends, and everyone around me seemed to know each other extremely well. Everyone also seemed to have a teacher that they went to for everything, a mentor. I didn't have that here. Bouncing around from school to school could be a lot on kids, especially at the age I was. I was attempting to figure out who I was and what my aspirations were. It didn't help that my parents turned me into a whole new world where I knew absolutely no one. Growing up, I was always taught to respect your elders and to treat everyone equally and with respect. I know that you're probably thinking, well, obviously you were taught this. A decent parent or any decent parent would raise their kids with these values. I'd like to know that these are the exact values that I were taught and emphasized throughout all of the Star Wars school system. Starting from this slide, leading on to Mrs. Crosby, and then my later years with Principal Creech. What most people don't know is that after, a year, after the year that I moved to Scarborough throughout high school, I bounced in and out of hospitals. I battled, or I battled position and had to go in for or count as extensive testing. I'm not going into detail about my past, but I did gain a couple positives from my unfortunate situation. My experiences with everything. <coughs> Help me develop a passion, a passion to become a doctor when I'm older, which is what I'm currently going to school for. And now, another positive that is that I dealt with many. Oops, sorry. All right, I'm just going to skip. My freshman year of high school, I did not have the privilege to have Mr. Peach as my principal, but I still remember the first time that I met him. I was walking into the school the first day of my sophomore year, and I saw this unbelievably tall man standing outside. <laughs> he seemed too friendly. He was greeting everybody, every student on their way to the school, with the biggest smile on his face. One that you couldn't help but smile back. Just a simple gesture set the tone for my day, and exactly how my high school year was going to be. I believe it was because I immediately could tell from his smile that he was genuine, and he was truly happy to be there. The next day I got off the bus and I saw him yet again, smiling and waving in the morning. I couldn't believe this. Here's his principal, outside, greeting all of us students. He was outside for every day, or every single day. Mr. Creech was always there to welcome me, even when it was pouring, or even in the middle of an oyster. I know from experience. <laughs> Within the first couple days of my sophomore year, I was officially introduced to Mr. Creech. I was standing in the hallway after school with my soccer staff. Mr. Creech came up to me and introduced himself. He asked me about myself, and I remembered him saying something in the lines of, It's nice to meet you. When you see me, make sure you say hi and remind me of me again. It's a priority and goal of mine to meet and know all, all or as many kids as I can in the school. You better believe it. Every day I walked into that school and I was greeted with a high five from Mr. Creech, which immediately put my four foot eleven stature. <laughs> Sorry, try not to cry. Um, this continues on the day that I graduated and still applies every time I come back to visit. My last visit with Mr. Creech was in December. As long as he's in that earth, as long as he was in the school that day, I always saw him and talked to him. Or if anyone seemed off, he expressed genuine concerns about him and asked if he could do anything to help. Mr. Creech always listened to the students as well. If they had a problem or anything that wanted to be heard, he made it a priority to listen to them and hear what they had to say. The most compelling part is that it seemed important to the students. He did everything in his power to make sure that they were heard and in some cases fought for. One example was during a pep rally my senior year, there was a girl in my grade who was extremely ill and unable to make it. She was devastated. So in the middle of the pep rally, he allowed some students to Skype her and put her on the big projection screen. 
she was able to be a part of something. She didn't think that she had the ability to be because Mr. Creech was an active on the students express. I'm going to go to the end because this is going to be I'm incredibly thankful to have met such an amazing person and even more blessed to have been given all the support and guidance that he has given. Mr. Creech is loved and appreciated by everyone around him. And I can only hope to touch as many lives as he continues to do every day. My name is Madison Chen and I do not accept Principal Creech's resignation. Like many of the people here tonight, I felt long and hard about what I wanted to say. In some quiet part of my mind, I just kept thinking, there must be something. Something I can say that will be so compelling that all at once, uh, in all of this mess, I will feel I will have felt like I made a difference. No matter how many questions I think to ask, I keep coming back to just one. How did we get here? How did we become a community so divided, so angry, so distrustful? Last April, after the vote was cast to change the times, I made the choice to become further engaged. I joined the Implementation Planning Committee because I believed in our superintendent and because change really is hard. Over the past year, I have listened to parents, students, faculty, and community members lay out the very personal and important reasons why such a drastic change to our start times will have a negative impact on the family. I brought their concerns to meetings and worked hard to find creative solutions. It was clear at those meetings we were up against a lot of problems. Vocational schedules, aftercare, parking lots, bus drivers, sports programs, we have talked about them all. And yet the community did not feel heard. And therein lies the biggest problem facing our schools. It isn't logistics or implementation or how many students will fit on a school bus. We are all here tonight to be heard. It is time for the board to ex accept that despite their best intentions, we are a community that does not feel respected or appreciated. Our efforts, our efforts to Above all else, it is disheartening to me, especially as a Scarborough graduate, to learn that collectively the teachers feel the same way. They are the backbone of this amazing district. Ultimately, it is the parents and teachers who are charged with doing what is right by our children. It is an unrealistic task to ask so many people who feel so unheard and so unappreciated. So here is my call to action. Accept the rescission of our beloved principal, hear our voices, help heal our community.
just wanted to read that the reason for Dave's dismissal is that he's no longer a good fit for this district. And what that says to me is that you're saying, you're telling our teachers that they're not a good fit for our district. And you are telling families like mine that we are not a good fit for this district. And you're telling our students. I 
have been nothing but impressed with Mr. Peach and what he has done for Charlotte High School. I have also spoken with many teachers, all who support President Peach, who feel they do not have a voice and their retribution that they would speak out of. As a special education director, I know firsthand the importance to provide those who teach the opportunity to offer input on their instructional strategies that impact students and families. I have done a task report of some of your controversial policy changes, but I have also respected Principal Creek for standing by the staff, students, and parents who disagree. It is important to have on staff those who are with all sides of the argument. The discourse expressed by students, teachers, and citizens of the town of Scarborough is not a healthy education environment and is a reflection of leadership. As an effective leader, now, effective leader is inspirational in bringing people together to work towards a common goal and who has the ability to find compromises to meet the needs of all involved. I urge you to listen to students, to teachers, and to the community members to find a solution.
familiarity. I've been open with five means of admission. My father started this business 35 years ago, and he used to tell me things, it's not the years, it's the mileage. I'm happy to tell you I love you know a lot more than my 30-something years in the teaching community. That's what happens when you grow up in a family business. One thing that I know for certain, that I am absolutely confident in, is that colleges, especially this day and age, want to see demonstrated interest coming from a student. They want to know that students are active, that they want that college. And most importantly, they want to see that a student has performed academically. This system does not show how critically important it is to a college when you have a student going home spending five hours a night to get all these versus a student going home spending an hour a night to achieve something that just exceeds.
talking about how to empower our teachers to make deeper and more effective connections with our children. How they can inspire curiosity and a desire to learn. Instead, we're talking and really fighting about bus schedules and whether we should put a one to four or an eight to F on the report card. At the end of the day, neither of these issues is going to improve the quality of our education and self substitution. This is compounded by the fact that instead of encouraging our teachers to further their education and enlightenment, we're forcing them to learn a poorly designed grading system. This is incredibly inefficient. I would suggest making PBL optional for our teachers and retreat to a pilot phase. Those who see benefit in it, he at the end should continue to refine the details and make it into something that can eventually add, add, add value to our schools. With regards to school start times, we're causing an awful lot of apprehension for what I perceive to be minimal benefit. Have you evaluated options like outsourcing your transportation or collaborating with other neighboring school districts to share buses? There's a lot of ways to slice it, but if you don't start with your, your transportation system, that's a result of your strategy. And while I do not know Mr. Creech personally, I apply his leadership to this journal. I truly hope that more of us can learn from his actions. Resolve conflict. Resolve conflict 
by listening, understanding other people's opinions, find a solution that everyone wins, and, and keep a positive environment. That's what we teach our children in Scarborough. What's happening here right now is not Scarborough. Look at the news. Look at the internet. Look at the newspapers. This is not what Scarborough is about. This is not how we behave. This is not how we treat them. This is not our community. We are devaluating the brand of the Scarborough school system and the high school. We must stay. Thank <laughs> you. 
a little bit. One of the things that my wife and I have been enjoying for the last few weeks has been a book on tape by Greg McGowan, and it's on essentialists and non-essentialists. And I encourage any of you, whether you own your own business or not, this is really a great book on how to prioritize the important things in your life. Um, one of the chapters that we talked about, that was talked about the other night, was about um, sunk cost bias. That's a really big word, but what sunk cost bias is, is when you have an investment in something, like clothing, you know, this thing may have terrible stains in it, and my wife said, you know, trade it in water, I'm going to trade it, and it's going paid $45 for this thing. She's like, you can't wear it anymore, so it's on a rack. That's sunk cost bias in one, in one thing, but the schedule thing. I feel sorry for this, this town and for the school board to have spent as much time as they have on the school bus start times and all that. We've spent a lot of time on this. I know many people, probably the school board, would say, guys, you know, you're all enraged about this now, but we've been talking about this for a few years, and, you know, why, why put on the brakes right now? And I can see that they don't want to change course, and a lot of people in the public want to change course. We don't want to turn our backs on two years of working on this thing. But it has been clearly spoken by this community that we, we really do want to change. It's, it's hard to turn your back on stuff. But clearly, you know, if it wasn't broken, you know, we don't have to fix it. Or if we do have to fix it, it creates to a compromise. Um, it doesn't clearly affect me. We have young kids who, you know, one of them wakes up early and doesn't. You know, this has really been a big issue for high school students. Um, but we have other friends who are very concerned about because they have young kids, and they don't want to see one group benefit and throw another group figuratively and literally under the bus. You know, we've got young kids, and now they're going to be forced to get up, and they need dying 10 hours of sleep. So we need to slow down. We need, we need to turn, you know, change course on this. That's, that's my thinking. With regards to Mr. Creech, I don't have any students in the high school. But as I said, I've worked with you know, three different principals in three different school districts. It's very evident to me from the public comment that this guy cares deeply about his students and his teachers. We said earlier about whether he is the right fit or not the right fit. The only thing that seems to be changing from five years ago to now is a grading system and start times. That's the only thing that's changed. So the fit, you know, it's lock and key here, is those other things seem to be driving the decision on our principal, not the other way around. Um, I, I really, you know, I really struggle as a teacher, and the reason I think I'm not in teaching anymore is I work with some principals and some staff who are completely disengaged. They just were collecting a paycheck. They were, just, they had too much sub cost bias into their education. They weren't going to change directions 10 years, 15 years into a career. I'm close to retirement, or I can make it to retirement, and then I can change course. And that's terrible for our students. We don't want people that don't want to be there. This guy wants to lead the school. He should stay in that position. It should, we should not be changing course there. And I believe that it has got to be about the grading system, and it's got to be about school parts times, because if it was anything dirty, we would have heard about it already.